What's up, lover researchers? It's Kevin. Today, we have finally reached the last video in our step-by-step -step follow along series on creating a UX project. If you've been following along and conducting your own research, I commend you, give yourselves a pat on the back for making it this far and being a badass UX leader. Today's video will be compiling everything that we've learned throughout the series and wrapping it up into an engaging, actionable presentation deck. If you're new here, check out part one of the series in the description below where we start our UX research project. I've created free materials that you can download each step of the way to help you along your journey, including a moderator script, a study plan template, and even a presentation template that we're gonna use for today's video. I also highly recommend this book, Presentation Zen by Gar Reynolds. There's so many useful things in here, practical tips, even real slides you can use. This is a little old school, but it tells you storytelling, examples of great presenters and how they deliver, and more. Uh, seriously, a lot of good stuff in here. You can check it out in the description below. And speaking of resources, if you're looking to up level with your UX knowledge, check out classes from the Interaction Design Foundation. It is one of the largest resources in the world for design and research. A ton of courses you could take and earn a certificate for finishing them. Classes on design, research management. Again, I thought this would be a perfect resource to leave you with after we finish up our project. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get it. If you want to check out my presentation template, go ahead and download it in the description below. I also have a lot of pro tips in there. This is a template that I've adapted over the years and that I use in my everyday work, but feel free to tweak it to your needs and your company's branding or whatnot. So this is the presentation template that I've included, so you can find it in the description below. I give you descriptions of what you can put in these things, uh, each slide. I include a few graphics for you to give you options. Um, but really just tweak it to what you need um, and also include some pro tips at the end so make sure to check those out and resources on presenting findings let's move over to our actual research deck so i did this i filled in our template with our research i called it the broward county ballot design so let's walk through it first things first very simple title slide then we're going to go into executive summary where you describe your background and objective <laughs> Just summarize what your research is about and why you were doing it. Talk about who your team was, the participants you used, and how. Okay, and I have a slide for the materials we use, just a couple pictures. And then we move on to the key insights and recommendations section. Now, the reason why I have it so early is assuming that you're presenting to your immediate team. They probably know what the background is, so you don't have to go and describe the whole thing. So I've included sections for both cases where you're presenting to new audiences and also your immediate team. This is where we answer the major questions from the study along with actionable recommendations. Presenting results without recommendations is kind of like defining a word using the word. <laughs> kind of useless. Oh, as long as you're here, can you run some vocabulary with me? Oh, that should be easy. Just give me the word and I'll put it in a sentence for you. Anodyne. Uh, a friend asked me what anodyne means. I start off with key insights because maybe the product managers care about the overall high level findings. Like what should we do? What direction should we move with? That's what PMs care about. So the key insights that we found, all right, we already listed this out in the previous video, but we're putting it everything onto our slides here. The treatment design had fewer instances of undervoting. Participants thought the treatment design uh, was clearer and they thought the control design was just more cluttered. Remember. Just because the treatment design did better doesn't mean we should say we should use the treatment design, okay? What we want to say instead are the good attributes of the treatment design. Or if there are any good attributes of control, we can keep that. So the recommendations we want to make are distinguish, separate the instructions from the voting section. Consider including a clear indication on where the voting sections begin. These fulfill user needs. I like to make my recommendations uh, connect with user needs. Whereas if you just said, let's move with the treatment design, you're not really explaining the why. My next slide is next steps. Using these recommendations, let's brainstorm design solutions. Let's diverge and then converge and then test again. That's the UX process. We're going to do this again. The background is where you go into the meat of your study. If you're presenting to an audience that doesn't really know your work, you might want to include this section. 
So I don't include a lot of words, I just include this image and talk to it in the meeting. So explain the problem, why we're doing this research uh, in a storytelling format. Then you can go into your detailed findings. So I separated it, this into two sections where I have the quantitative survey results and then the qualitative results. So let's start with the quantitative survey. The title here is the main point. So for the title, you don't wanna say something like control versus treatment, because that doesn't tell you anything. You want titles to tell you something. What I have listed here is the quant data, the so 100% of participants in a treatment condition, fill it in. I also list the Clyde squared test results and include a graph. Then I move into the qualitative user study. All of this is showing evidence and building a case for your recommendations. So this Venn diagram, if you watch part five, you, you'll find it very familiar. Uh, just kind of go over this. Both ballots were easy, but the treatment provided more clarity and list the reasons why. Um, I would verbally summarize after you've shown this data that, hey, we got quant and qual data. Both of them showed that the treatment design did better. The quant data showed us which one did better, but the qual data shows us why it did better. Next up, I just have a quote I just pulled from the participants and a little picture that kind of give more evidence to our point. Then I have a section for other findings. It's not really the main part of your research, but things that you've noticed uh, and should be addressed, maybe to dig in deeper in, in future research. For example, two participants started voting in the middle column. I noticed this. And another finding uh, was that two participants sketched out alternative designs and they both sketched out the instructions being at the top. So my recommendation here would be consider iterating on a similar format for future comparisons. This section are more my thoughts and more commentary, not necessarily from the research itself, but it could include heuristic evaluations or, or expert reviews. So this is what we mentioned in the first video of why I think the control version sucks. And finally, we're gonna reiterate the impact of this research. Not on a slide, just say this out loud during the meeting. You know, like why was this research important? Uh, this study allowed us to determine how to improve the ballot design so that voters will not accidentally undervote. Elections, that's a big deal. You don't want people making mistakes there or messing up because your design sucked. So this is a huge impact study and just reiterate that, why it's important. That's it for the deck, like 20 something slides of research findings. That's it. This is the appendix where I add in the participant information, the research questions. No, I haven't finished that, but you get the idea. Study limitations, links for your stakeholders, like include the study plan, discussion guides, materials, and anything else that they want to know. Yeah, I have less than 30 slides in here, and it gets the point across. Your research presentations do not have to be long. If I were to present this for real, I, I think this would take a total of mm, 10 or 15 minutes to present and then leave the rest of the time for questions from your stakeholders. That's probably what I would do. So that's it for this video. I hope that walkthrough was helpful and showed you how I structure my presentations. But again, you don't have to follow it to a T. Tweak it to what your audience might need. Anyway, I had a lot of fun making this series. I really hope you enjoyed it. I did put a lot of work into it. If you did, it'd mean a lot to me if you smash that like button and share this video out with other aspiring UX researchers. Comment down below if you'd like to see another series like this, or let me know how and what I can do to make it better next time. Remember that if you conducted this yourself, you can use this as a portfolio piece or as an inspiration for you to do your own project and solve other problems out there. Go forth, badass UX leaders, solve them problems. You're all making an impact just by watching these videos and learning the skills. I post all things UX research related to help you become the most badass UX leader. Matt Love, peace.